This is Cinema Sunday. After the Credits Movie Reviews. Welcome back to another After the Credits Movie Review. I'm professional voiceover artist John Bailey, and here's a few movie reviews and TV show reviews for you. Cabin in the Woods. Is it a horror? Or is it a comedy? You decide. Uh, yeah, you're gonna go in scratching your head going, uh, is this a comedy? I'm laughing more than I should in a horror movie, and... Is this a horror movie? It's really gory for a comedy. I think this falls in the category of dark, dark comedy. There was so many freaking references to classic movies. I was just, I couldn't keep track of them. There was a reference to The Shining. There was a reference to Hellraiser. There was a reference to Evil Dead, Night of the Living Dead, Aliens. I mean, you name it. There was references in this thing. Uh, the Ring, all the, <laughs> it's like, huh, slow down, stop. I want to go back and see what that, what that was. That was a reference to, to a movie I've seen before. I even saw a reference to Anaconda in there, I think. Uh, so yeah, this is definitely worth seeing. Uh, I have to give it a 3.75 out of 5. Wasn't good enough to be a 4 out of 5. Wasn't bad enough to be a 3 out of 3 out of 5. A little bit of a spoiler. It's not a reality show, horror movie type thing. It's a high-tech sacrificial offering kind of thing. It basically tries to use technology to explain every bad horror movie and even every good horror movie ever made. That there's the token jock, the token smart guy, the the token foolish drug head, the, fo- the token easy girl. These are all, you know, they have to have those particular, they all have to die to sacrifice to appease the underworld, dark god, whatever. But yeah, uh, not for kids, not for preteens, you know, go if you're an adult. But it's 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 interesting. <laughs> it was cool to watch. I was just a little confused at first. Once you figure out what's going on, you're, it, it's actually pretty funny considering it's a horror film. 21 Jump Street. Oh, man. Four and a half out of five, at least. It's not a perfect movie, but, man, it was really, really good. Super, super vulgar, but I love it when the movies don't take themselves too seriously on the TV shows that they're based on, like Land of the Lost, Starsky and Hutch, that kind of thing. So that's what 21... And there was so many different cameos. I, I thought there was going to be... I knew there was going to be one, but I didn't realize there was going to be a whole bunch of them. Anyways, uh, yeah, it was a really, really funny movie. Definitely stick around for the credits. There was there was sprinkled throughout the credits, the pre-credits, I guess I should say. There was clips or outtakes, cut scenes that they added into the pre-credit stuff. You'll get a big smile on your face if, you stay, if you're a real big fan of the original show and you're nostalgic. Stick around to the end of the credits of 21 Jump Street. Wrath of the Titans, which was really, really, really re- should be called Rehash of the Titans because it really was a rehash. I'm sorry, don't judge me. We've only had a few big action movies this year, and I just felt like they reused a lot of the original stuff. The main villain at the end looks like a lava version of the Kraken to me. They reused the Minotaur. The only difference in the whole movie is the guy got hair. I did like the fact the Cyclopses, I like those. And I like the fact that one of the characters, the one that created the Trident, he's one of my favorite actors. He's really, really cool. I loved him in Underworld, um, but I was really disappointed because he was kind of crazy, loop de loop. He sounded a lot like he does as one of the robots in uh, Astro Boy. So, but yeah, I'm sorry. I can't give this thing more than a three out of five unless you really, really love the 3D. Don't go see this one until it comes out on Redbox or goes to the dollar discount theater or whatever. American Reunion. Three and a half out of five stars. Especially if you're nostalgic because during the credits they show pictures from the first film up to now and you're like, holy cow, I, they don't even look old to me because I grew up technically. Uh, they, they, the first movie came out the year before I got married. <laughs> and... Uh, um, so yeah, that, uh, I was like, they, they don't even look any different to me. And then they show the pictures. I'm like, oh, I'm so old. Don't go see it if you're a minor, but really, really funny. Was not as dirty as the last film was. Still pretty nasty. I was kind of wondering where they were going to go with it, but it actually turned out pretty well. For TV, I finally got to see Green Lantern, the animated series. I am really sorry. I'm not a fan. Uh, I, to be honest, I missed the first three episodes and it's finally on demand on Xfinity. So you can catch up, but unfortunately it's only four, five, and six and they didn't have one, two, and three. So... I'll try to give it a fair shake, but from what I've seen, I'm not a fan of it. It's basically red versus blue, except it's red versus green. It's it's the Red Lanterns versus the Green Lanterns. And I, I love Atrocitus' voice, and I love Kevin Michael Richardson as Kilowog. I love all the characters Kevin does. Uh, it was pretty cool hearing Clancy Brown as one of the villains in one of the episodes. But as far as... Uh, it has the same problem that I had with the original Transformers series. With the last season, they got off-world, and then they went all the, all the way throughout the galaxy. It's it's three guys and a robot going around the galaxy saving stuff. I think they should have established Hal Jordan on Earth saving people. as Make him into the hero first before you go into the whole Green Lantern. Green Lanterns. Let's stick with one Green Lantern. Focus on Hal make it a, you know, a Superman-type, Batman-type thing instead of bringing all the lanterns and it's a whole lantern versus lantern war and it's in space. It just seems, I don't know, I have a feeling that if they pursue this format, the show is going to be after the first season. 
that's just my two cents. We've already lost Thundercats and Voltron, uh, different reasons, but same thing. Uh, Thundercats, I'm sorry, you guys disappointed me. You didn't went way too kiddish, and you did way too many filler episodes. You didn't focus on the main good guys, main bad guys enough. There wasn't enough cats and lizards fighting stuff. I, I just... I don't know. It, it has the animation style. It has the sound effects. It has the music that all make it feel like the original. But the stories are just super, super babyfied. And Voltron, I think you spent all your money on your C-Gen stuff, and your Flash animation kind of killed it for you because it's really, really cheap looking. It's just I don't know how else to describe that. So we've already lost two, and I have a feeling Green Lantern's in that same boat. Transformers Prime, don't get your hopes up, because Nemesis Prime, five out of five stars episode, by the way. Nemesis Prime was a great episode, although we kind of saw that coming. We knew Mech was after parts to build their own robot they can control. We kind of saw that they were going to be behind this. But Grill, the one that followed up Nemesis Prime, wow, super stinker. I give it a .5 out of five. It was the worst episode I've seen. I thought we were past this, guys. Season one should have had all the filler kitty episodes this was worse than a rehash episode. I know they're trying to catch everybody up with the story and the characters because they might have just been coming in mid-season and they never saw season one. But, oh, man, it's already on It's already on Netflix, guys. They, they probably know what's going on by now. You did not have to... It would have been better if they'd been sitting around the ship going, remember that one time? But, ugh, really? The only good part of that episode was the last minute when Prime shows up. That's the only good part of the whole episode. The rest of it, finally got to catch up with Spider-Man, the new Spider-Man show. Where They just took Malcolm in the middle and animated the thing. Oh, I'm not oh, I'm not digging the animation style. It's too anime. It's like over the top. I mean, I thought Teen Titans, you could tell that that was made to be that way. They animate Spider-Man like it's going to be a real show like the Avengers. And then it turns into anime to way too often. And the whole... I'm going to break the fourth wall thing with like Malcolm in the Middle does. It doesn't it doesn't work for that show. The new Avengers show? Yeah. There we go. Good 4 out of 5. Avengers, good job. So, catch the Avengers. That was that was cool. Uh Spider-Man not so much. Young Justice continues to improve. I hope they don't cancel the series cuz it just got it just if you didn't see the last episode, it just got really good. So anyways, but I do feel like they're kind of pulling things from some of the animated films, some of the storylines. I feel like there's a little bit of uh I, I don't know. I feel like there's a little bit of several different films that we've seen recently, including the Vandal Savage stuff from Ultimate Doom. Uh, even Bane's even animated similarly. I don't know if they're trying to tie these together on purpose or not, but it feels that way. New Girl, great show. I'm a big fan of Zoe Deschanel. She's super cute. She's really funny. And she's a great singer, by the way. Way better talented, in my opinion, than Katy Perry, and it's cuter than Katy Perry. She just doesn't have the same accessories if you know what i'm saying anyways my point is that that show is really funny it actually has one of the stars in it that was the love interest one of the main stars from easy a which i actually did a few trailers for so i was really surprised to see him because i didn't really i was like he's all grown up now <laughs> uh so yeah i was really surprised at that but it's a really funny show it's really well done big bang theory continues to, to make me laugh uh five out of five series completely all the way through Last episode was a must-see. Please go back and catch up with it if you have Comcast on demand. My wife's a big fan of Mike and Molly. It's a pretty good show. Uh, I give it about a three and a half out of five. So it's, it's, it's okay. It's for people my age. It's not for kids. It's not for young adults won't get it. It's for, you know, 30 plus. But it's still a cute show, and it's got its moments. I mean, it won an award for a reason. How I Met Your Mother, it's kind of hit and miss here lately. It's really funny, and then it's not really funny. Then it's really funny, it's not really funny. So they need to, I can tell, I know they're on the last season and all, but they need to, Get the ball rolling with the funny. Bring me back why I like the show in the first place. Bruh. The Muppets on Blu-ray and DVD. Um, hmm. I like it, but I don't love it. It was great. The movie itself is really funny. It's, it's, we built this city. Okay, it's just great. It's a great movie, for, especially if you're a Muppets fan from way back. Uh, I agree with Tara Strong, uh, voice actor of Bubbles, as well as many others. It's a great movie, and it'll make you cry at the end because it's just, this is so much... Muppetness to it, but the Blu-ray was really disappointing. They had a lot of extra features, but none of them were really that great. And I was kind of hoping for a lot more. The bloopers are worth it, but I mean, I felt like I paid extra for the Blu-ray and only got just a little bit extra. Eh, was, I would stick with it if the DVD has the bloopers on it. I would stick with the DVD. I don't pay, don't pay the extra for the Blu-ray unless you just have to have super high quality. Ten Ten on Blu-ray, definitely worth it. I mean, that was a great movie, but on Blu-ray, it's really cool. It's perfectly crystal clean. Really nice HD. Comes with a ton of extra features. It was a really, really cool movie. Plus, I did some trailers for 1010. Until next time, catch Cinema Sundays, Rated G. Insert shameless ravage the insult comic plug right here, yes. 